in their vision. All right. So for any one creative director, you need maybe about 10, 20, all the way to like maybe 30, 40 product developers to realize that dream. And of course, a product has many kind of categories. For example, what you see on the runway, for example, you see runway shows, right? You see people walk, model, walk down, yeah, wear until like that. How can wear? How can wear? You're so funny. Da, 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 all that kind of thing, right? But then when it filters down to retail, you, like for example, like if you see brands like maybe, yeah, Gucci, lah, now very popular. You see all these, if you see the Gucci runway show, you see that they're done in a super crazy, weird way, or Balenciaga, they do it in a super crazy, weird way, right? But when it filters down to retail, and at the end of the day, all the young people are buying, it's just a t-shirt that says Balenciaga, <laughs> right? Notice right, Gucci, that's it, right? So, but the thing is that someone, it must be created by someone. It cannot just come out of no one, nowhere, all right? So that is the pro job of a product developer. That's the job of the designer team, design team, all right? So you need a lot of people in that, in that, especially now with fast fashion and all that kind of things, you know? The, for example, like Zara, they have a team of easily over 60, 50, 60 product developers and design in the, in the design team. And their average age is about 26 years old. Why? Because 26 years old, when you work old, all the way till 3 a.m., you can still come to work at 8. <laughs> yeah. If you're 30 something, you're like, <laughs> it's a bit painful, right? So, but not to say that not all industries are like that, all right? So the idea is that you do have all these potential places and spaces, especially for e-commerce, it's still a very growing um, industry, all right? Right now, e-commerce is a very interesting spectrum of uh, retail because uh, while we have seen e-commerce grown exponentially in the past 10 years, it's still something that not all brands know how to grasp, all right? Because people who don't do traditional retailing are going into retail. Like for example, Amazon's, Alibaba, or you know, that, that, Taobao, yes, right. So they are essentially just a place that sell anything and everything, right? But they are slowly going into fashion retail, all right? It is said that actually uh, Amazon is actually procuring their own garment factory. So you'll be buying an Amazon brand fashion clothes, not t-shirt Amazon like that. Huh? It's really clothes that I'm really, they are making a statement fashion-wise. So we are seeing it changing in that way. So what those requires a lot of new opportunities for people to come in for new jobs creation and all that kind of stuff, all right? So when we look at the list here, we're really talking about the whole process of what TFTC provide. It's really this line. From inspiration, creation, production, export, distribution, and transaction, we cover generally this spectrum of the industry, all right? So how to get an idea? Talk about fabric development, uh, material development, advanced construction. So when you say fabric development, what's there? Cotton is cotton, no? shirt is shirt, no? right? Shirt is shirt, t-shirt is t-shirt. What's the difference with new technology? What, what is this new technology that people are talking about? There are tons of new technolo technology right now in fabrics, but people are more interested in fashion rather than in fabrics. But fabrics has been going through leaps and miles, right? So a good example of what they're doing is actually making fabrics interactive, all right? You know our phones? Touchscreen phones, they make glass interactive, right? You mean you can touch glass and all that, right? So your phone can work, ma? But now they're making it on fabrics, all right? So how they are going about doing it? They're going about doing it by doing something like this. So the jacket I'm wearing by sliding my fabric, I control my phone, all right? So that is what fabric technology has become, all right? So next time when you watch TV, you cannot find your remote, don't even need to find a remote, you just touch your cushion, <laughs> zan, 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 your, your TV can change, right? So the idea of fabric technology has gone leaps and bounds, right? So how is it going to affect the way that we wear clothes? Because we are now wearing all this 
technology with us, all right? And we have become very powerful. One person can have three, four power banks. So you become very powerful, all right? So, so the question is, how are we going to deal with all this technology that we're wearing, that we're using in a way that is not intrusive, all right? So that is the fabric technology we're talking about, all right? Of course, creation, all right? Product design, marketing, quality assurance, knowing that this quality is good, all right? Because we want clothes that last. Well, depends on how you want to do it. H&M would want clothes to disintegrate because they want you to continue to buy new things, right? But there are certain things that if you're going to look at quality, if you're doing designer clothes and all that, you want them to make sure that it lasts for a long time, all right? And of course, production, you need to do your sourcing. You need to find where to get the best priced button, the best priced fabric, the best quality of fabrics, and all that kind of things, all right? Compliance, social compliance. Nowadays, a lot of people are getting a lot more socially conscious, all right? What's the carbon footprint of your garment, all right? A pair of jeans takes up like 70 liters of water to do. All right, but now with technology, you can do, you can dye the jeans, do all the washing and everything with just one little cup of water. So water is being recycled because there are places where you don't even have water. So these are the these are questions we uh, consumers are actually asking nowadays. And a lot of brands, like for example, you I'm sure you've seen H and M and Uniqlo saying that we are going to use organic cotton and be more socially responsible, environmentally responsible as well. All right, so. The export, all right? This is where, because we're doing so much export business from, we are designing in Singapore for a brand in US that is sourced in India, that is produced in China, delivered to US, all right? So it becomes a multinational network uh, industry, all right? So things like taxes, duties, and all these things come into play, all right? But consumers don't really understand that, or you don't really see that. Well, you don't have to see that, all right? Which is also why garment can, the price of a garment can differ from country to country. You can buy something from Singapore, then you're like, hey, how come I go US and buy the same brand, the same design, more expensive, or stuff like that, all right? It, it might take them for a ride and all that. Because you do have price, you do have costing that's built inside, like the government will tax it. Like Singapore tax 7% for, for, for for GST, right? So different countries have different kinds of taxation and all that kind of duty rates and all that. So this is extremely important for buyers as well, if you want to be a fashion buyer. All right, and of course, distribution, warehousing, quality assurance, shipping, okay? All the way down to transactions, online sales, catalog sales, retail sales, do web developing. All right? How do you, people just do TikTok for no reason, change the face, do the hair movement, you know, but, kind of thing. but how are you going to monetize it if your customers are using that? All right? So these are some of the things that we will cover. All right? And of course, there's a growing market because most of the time for the past, maybe five years or so, five, six years or so, we are seeing a lot more students wanting to set up their own business, which is a good thing because Singapore always try to promote entrepreneurship. All right, but the idea of wanting to do that and knowing what it takes are two very different things. You know, some people like to fall in love, but when they fall in love, they find that it's very painful, right? But they like the idea of falling in love. You watch Crashing Into You, right? Like, oh, the guy, oh my God, North Korea, the distance, you know, right? But then when you date someone, then this cannot go out, that cannot go out. You have to watch certain Vin Diesel movie. You're not interested, you know, the kind of thing. And you're like, yeah, it's so difficult. But when you're single, you're like, yeah, people attach. I'm so sad. I'm so alone. So the idea of what you have in your idea and what you really have to run can be two very different things, right? So. We are seeing a lot of people coming into our industry wanting to set up a, a business because we really teach them really industry-based things, all right? We don't spend a lot of time delving into this kind of thought process, not thought process per se, but inspirations and all that kind of things. We teach you that you need to do A, B, C, D, E, all right? Any other thing we presume that you also know already. That's why TFTC, we cater mostly to adult uh, mostly to adult learners, all right? So you have a lot of uh, people setting up, selling at Etsy, selling uh, their own websites and stuff like that, but some of them don't really know what they're doing, 
Like Love Bonito, the brand, when they first started out, they don't really know what they're doing. They just, you know, go through the, the school of hard knocks, lah, right? So you pay, you pay your school fees through make failures, I mean, making mistakes and all that kind of stuff, right? So what we try to do is that we want to make sure that, that since there's this growing number of people who are very interested in, um, our causes have actually morphed for the, from the past maybe 15 years or so to cater to that, all right? So these are some of the uh, maker movement that FTC supports. All right, all these are local designers or the, the places where pe local designers can actually create and sell their stuff there. All right. So what is FTC? We are a training industry. We've been training since uh, 1983. All right. In fact, we've trained even longer. It's just that it's not called FTC. Like we're part of the Textile and Fashion Federation. All right. So I think it was set up in the 1960 something. Yeah, all right. So that's where you have a training side of it. So we also have deeply interwoven network, all right. These are some of the brands that we work very closely with, all right. So LVMH, so we do uh, training with them for uh, Louis Vuitton, we do training for Chanel, we do training for MS, we do training for uh, retailers, big department stores like Tanks, all right. We do it for uh, different kind of fashion association all over the world, like in Cambodia, in uh, Malaysia, all right, Indonesia, and all that kind of places. We work with uh, Li and Fong, all right. This is Hansei, one of the biggest uh, garment manufacturer in Korea, all right. So we our network is quite big, all right, and of course we have continual network uh, sessions. So every year we would have some event, all right? It may not be the same event year in year, but every year we would have some form of event where we get our students to come in and interact with people and stuff like that. So it becomes like a speed dating process, right? It's where you, it's a perfect opportunity for you to get your brands out, to talk to people, to pick on minds of businessmen and all that kind of things, all right? To lay your contacts. So, TFTC essentially have four different types of training um, format, all right? In a way, we do have the diploma program, which is a three and a half months to four months program. That is intensive, full-time training program, all right? We also have advanced certificate. Advanced certificate are people who want to take it, maybe they, okay, when you take the diploma program, you kind of not, you won't be able to have a day job because it's full out eight hours of training and stuff like that. For people who are thinking, I want to see whether the industry is for me, I'm not too sure, but I still want to be an insurance agent and you know, that kind of thing. So we do have advanced, it's almost like an introductory program that is mostly a evening class. So you do three hours a few times a week, all right? But of course, because of that, the timing is longer. All right, but that, this is a more um, diluted version of what you see. M most people who take this uh, certificate classes will move on. If they find that this is really for them, they tend to move on to diploma, which we tend to go quite deep into the whole process. All right, professional short courses. So we do have things like sewing classes, basic drafting classes. We have basic draping classes for people who maybe uh, want to do business, but mostly on a small scale. We do have people who like. I want to do a alteration business at home, you know? So I want to learn how to, so I learn how to measure clothes and take in things, the different way of taking things in. I want to know about fit. So we do have these small little causes for people to take that. And obviously, we do have master classes as well. Master classes are mostly classes that if you have your base already, it goes a lot deeper, all right? So we do have masters for, Example, uh, Shingo Sato, who is, who is a very ex, uh, who is a very technical, very innovative draper, that he drapes three-dimensional shapes out, right? Or even Julian Roberts from, I think, in Europe, right? He also does that. So you must have some form of basic knowledge in order to go to those master classes, all right? So we, our master classes are when we fly in people with a certain expertise to run. We run it. A, maybe one to two times a year. So it doesn't happen all the time, all right? So these are master classes for people who want to kind of further their 
knowledge on what they need to do. This is open to everyone, including some designers, some graduates from NAFA or TP. They start working and they're like, ah, I do the same thing every day. Maybe I want to learn something new to push the idea. All right. So that's where they take our master classes. All right. So these are the four different types of formats. So how we run our classes is in these kind of uh, configurations. We do have lectures, right? e-learning. We are in the process of conver converting a lot of our modules into e-learning because of COVID virus also. Like, it helps like, that you know, people are like, freaked out. Like, oh, yeah, I don't want to come to school, but I still want to learn how, how, right? You open your laptop, blah. And you learn that, right? So we're doing that. And of course, group discussion, demonstration. You can see the machines around you. So you're actually doing things as well, all right? Because we are textiles and fashion industry training center. So the things we, we teach you have to be a, in a very practical way, right? Doing it the industry way, okay? Case studies, practical exercises, role playing, and hands on activity, all right? So the three uh, diplomas that we have are essentially the apparel design and product development, the footwear design and product development, and of course the fashion business. These are the three uh, areas that we, for, uh, which we have our diploma, but I'm gonna talk to you about the apparel design and the fashion business side today, all right? So where we teach, so this is where we have done training, all right? So, We've gone to very nice places like Taipei, Hong Kong, to quite, uh, and also I believe in New York, right? To a bit on the, I don't even know, the birds don't even want to lay eggs places, like, you know, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Istanbul, New Delhi, and all that kind of places, right? Because that's where the heart of manufacturing is, all right? So what's the difference between TAFTC TC and other schools? Our modules are four months long, three and a half months to four months long. Other schools take three years and stuff like that. So that's why do know that our diploma is extremely intensive. It's very, very intensive because we don't really um, take away anything you experience in fashion school. So what they experience in three years, we kind of concentrate it to three and a half months and four months. But of course, like I said, there are certain things we don't take we don't really teach, like for example, we don't re for a designer, we don't really nurture the whole inspiration element. We presume that you would know how to, you already have a sense of idea of what your, your design aesthetic is and all that kind of stuff, all right? So we focus on teaching you the skills that you need to get a collection out. We teach you the skills to create a, a garment. We teach you the skills to, to do buying for retail and all that and so on and so forth, all right? And of course, we partnered with various uh, schools all over the world. One of them is uh, Atelier uh, Chandon Stava, which is in Paris. And we'll have a store, I guess we a branch in Berlin. So our students who take our diploma courses, where they feel that because they have the industry, they have the practical knowledge, they want to really push forward the kind of ideation aspect of their work. So, where, so they would take degree programs, all right? So we've uh, worked with a few universities overseas to kind of shave off the first foundation year and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, here Shadow Sava is in Paris. We are working currently with Polymoda, which is in Italy. We are working with some of the schools, fashion schools, Limbs College, which is in the US, all right, to get all these things done. In fact, a lot of our students actually, and I work with some of the students who want to prepare their portfolio and stuff like that. They've sent their portfolios and successfully entered um, Central St. Martins, FIT, Parsons, and all that kind of stuff, all right? So for people who want to think about what is the next thing for me after I take the TFTC program, the diploma program, one thing is if you, want, if you choose to further your studies, these are the opportunities that you have out there. All right? So this is our various trainers. Our trainers, our minimum requirement for a trainer have to have at least five years knowledge, at least five years, all right? But none of our trainers is five years. It's easily more, all right? Our trainers is between five to 40 years in our industry, all right? Because what we want is really people with industry uh, expertise to know what they're talking about when they teach you. In fact, a lot of our trainers are people who are currently still in the industry. So they will tell you what is currently going on in this industry because our industry is constantly changing. All right. So you notice that for full-time staff in TFTC, we don't really have a lot of full-time staff, full-time trainers. Lah. But part-time training, we have quite a lot because we require these people to always go back to, to get what they want. Even for full-time staff like myself, I will often work with 
retailers or designers to constantly refresh what is going on in the industry. Because it's important for students to know what is it that is currently happening right now. All right? So some of the projects that we've done with various brands. All right? So the additional benefit, of course, you have uh, the facilities. All right, the sewing machines, the overlocking machines, and all that kind of things. Um, we have uh, overseas trips. All right, we have exchange programs with students. So we've done exchange programs with uh, universities in China. We've done exchange program with university in Paris as well, in France as well. All right, so we bring them all over the world. Well. And every session we would have the meet the CE session. This is our CEO, uh, Doreen Tan. So every end of the module, end of the program, there will be a sit down to kind of exchange or really talk about what is it that you want and how um, you can go forward with the things that you want to do. Our trainers also tend to do that. For example, if you are, some people come in, uh, I want to be a designer. Then do really like, eh, cannot design, like, do really, eh, cannot do this, like, cannot do But I want to be in this industry, how, how, you know, that kind of thing, right? So uh, you'll be surprised, we, our students' range are actually quite wide. I actually taught rocket scientists before. Yeah, I taught a BMW dealer salesman. Right? I said, why are you not, you, you too, too unhappy with a huge amount of money you're earning, <laughs> right? So then we have people who are warship designers. Yeah, so you have all kinds. Of course, you do have the administrative staff, the housewife, you know, my children grow up already, and da da da, all that kind of stuff, right? So, but there are some people who go into design and think that, you know, I want to design because I like the idea. Then you, when you design, you can't really draft, you can't really sew, but you still want to be in this industry. Then you're like, maybe I need to go to fashion business because you're still in the industry itself, right? So, our trainers do give some form of counseling and other kind of things to the students as well, okay? And of course, for new, uh, young people, we do have our E2I uh, career mapping workshop to see what kind of job is suitable for you, kind of based on your character and your ability and all that kind of things, right? And of course, how to write resumes for people who've never write resumes before, right? Mm. I've seen a lot of resumes for graduates. It's quite scary nowadays. In fact, the picture is that Instagram picture <laughs> behind of the head. Yeah, the kind of things on that. Uh. So a bit, you know, yeah. Right? And of course, opportunities to network at events. Alright? So let's talk a little bit, of, let's talk now into the diploma program and what the modules are inside. So we start off with the apparel design and product development pro uh, program. So you learn how to identify market opportunities, create trendy products, all right, which people will love. Very important. Uh. No point doing things people don't love. No point doing things only you love. There are people who do things like that. Uh. You'd be surprised. Huh? Like I said, that's why I say you are in a very expensive hobby. <laughs> yeah. All right. So gain hands-on experience on developing technical products, technical specification. All right. Really putting down the measurements, instructing the, the cell makers how to sew your garments and all that kind of things, and really study how a garment is made, all right? So, like for example, when you are shopping, uh, you see two kinds of people going through clothes, like this. They look at things and they're like... There are only two kinds of people. Uh. One kind of people are aunties. Uh. Look at this, like got string come out, got this come out, got string, like your string come out, your string come out, you know? Right. The other type is, they look at things and they're like, how is it done? Why is it done this way? Where is it made? Bangladesh. For what price? $14.90. Then they calculate how much it costs. Huh? How come they can come up with this price? Da -da 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 -da. Who is producing it? I need to find that. Then they look, 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 look. How they... So that is, that is um, what we call, um, you know, being really involved in your career line. That's not a bad thing. Eh? So you shop very differently once you come into our diploma program. It totally changes your idea of what shopping is about now. All right? So, and of course, how to test and modify pro uh, your products for production. All right? So the next intake is in 31st of March. All right? It's a four-month program. All right? It's full-time from 8.30 to 6.30. All right? Uh, Generally, it's Monday to Friday, but depending on the schedule, sometimes you, they will have classes on Saturdays, but we will shave off one day in the weekday and, da, 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 and all that kind of stuff, all right? 
And of course, our advanced certificate, the three hours on a, uh, every session classes, we, our next intake will be in the 25th of uh, July. All right? It is seven months long. All right? So it's about three times a week. Three times a week all right? in the evening. All right? so, uh, so it's seven to set 10, 15, 15 minute break and all that. Lah, all right? For people to come in, rush down from their work and all that kind of stuff. All right? So uh, you have that for seven months. That's why it's much longer. So for our fashion business, all right, so talk about merchandising, knowledge in developing quality products, okay, acquiring uh, effective marketing tools and branding, all right, and of course e-commerce uh, platforms and stuff like that, all right. The whole program is also about three and a half months to four months long, depending on schedule, all right. So again, it is full time. For our advanced certificate for fashion business, again, the intake will be in July. So again, this is five months long. It's a little bit shorter. All right, because for fashion business, it's a lot more theory based in that sense. For our apparel, you have sewing. We included sewing, drafting, and all that kind of modules in there. All right. So these are some of our modules that we teach in the program. So at understanding textiles. All right. Understand and analyze textiles. Gum. Textiles is one of the most important thing ever. It is the alphabet of wanting to be an English teacher. Is extremely basic and extremely important. Learn how to identify fabrics and all that. For some of you who may go to Chinatown uh, or Arab Street, uh, you go and buy fabrics, right? You ask this uncle, uncle, what's this fabric? Uh? Cotton. Then what's this fabric? Uh? Cotton. Then what's this fabric? Uh? Cotton. Then how all the different ones? They're all cotton, 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 right? He's not wrong, but he's not right, all right? Because you have to understand, like, uncles or aunties like that, uh, they are trading company. They buy fabric from stock lot and then they sell. So they may not know that this is a poplin, they may not know that this is a jersey, they may not know that they just, uh, you got extra, okay, I sell, I sell, I see how much, you sell how much, there, mark my prices and sell, law, right? So they may not know, even they may be running for 40 years in the business, right? So if you want to know what kind of fabrics it is, when you're talking to suppliers, when you're talking to fabric mills and all that kind of stuff, it's important to know what kind of fabric you're talking about. And of course, when people sell you those fabric, you know that you're not taking for a ride. Lah. Like most people who go buy, tailoring fabric, uh, they buy, then it has, you know some tailor fabric, they have wording um, woven into the edge of the salvage, the salvage of the, the fabric. 100% uh, super wool. Da -da -da -da. Wow, super wool. Uh. Person, yeah, super wool, super wool. You know, that's why, how much? Uh, $25 a meter. Uh, uh, $25 is so cheap uh, because wool uh, is very expensive. Must be 40 something, right? Wow, so I'm getting a good deal. Then they buy, 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 buy. Right? Then they come and say, oh, Thomas, this is super wool. I feel, feel, feel. This is not wool. No, but it's wool. It says super wool. I said, hot dog is a dog. Uh. <laughs> Right. No, but they say super woo. Then I take, uh, I take uh, we just do a very simple test, like a burning test, like burn, 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 burn. polyester. Then they're like, how can they do that? How can they do that kind of thing? But I said, it's a name. It's not a description. It's a name of the fabric. It's not a description of what the content is at, at all that. Because your name, you can sing Zhen Jiao Mei Li, but doesn't mean you Zhen Mei Li. You know what I mean or not? It's a name. Right? So, if, you know what I mean? I can call myself Handsome Tan, but doesn't mean I'm really handsome. It's a name, right? So, if to not be taken for a ride, you have to know what is it that you're buying. So, this is an extremely important uh, module. All right? Of course, interpret, interpreting our pattern draft, sewing sequence and all that. How do a garment is sewn in a, in a proper way? All right? Which step takes the start first and then so on and so forth? And really understanding pattern blocks. Right? When we draft the pattern, we see the blueprint, like the shape of the garment that you're in. All right? Analyze garment construction, looking at how a garment is produced, looking at a garment and see how it is produced. Why do you need to do that? Because there is an expensive way of producing it, there's a cheap way of producing it, there's a quality way of doing it, there's a fast way of doing it. Every road leads to Rome. What, how do you want to produce it can determine the price point that you're going to sell it in. All right? So you'd be surprised, like most people, government, government, just put in the sleeve, not put in the sleeve, man. But do you put in the sleeve first? Do you sew in the sleeve first? Or then you, or you sew the armhole, then you sew the side seam with the underarm together. And uh, all this saves time. All right? Because you can think that a garment takes half an hour to sew. But let's say if your t-shirt takes half an hour to sew, uh, it's way too long. Huh? <laughs> for production, okay? Because your t-shirt 
you can take half an hour to sew, uh, but if I produce 50,000 pieces, wow, your things will come out until like next year. Leh. <laughs> right? So an average time for someone to sew a t-shirt is about seven minutes, seven to five minutes. Some can even do it within three minutes. Yeah. That's why they call fast fashion. La. That's how fast. La. It's not just about trend, la. it's about production as well. All right? So that tells about the garment construction elements of it. Draw digital image, of course, introducing you to uh, our Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, and all that kind of stuff. So for people who are taking this, you kind of know that you need to be a bit more tech set. Well, don't have to be savvy. La. You have some form of tech knowledge. La. Tech knowledge means how to turn on the plug. Because I'm like, how come no screen? Nothing. Wa, nothing. Would you turn on like, oh, click, that kind of thing. La. Right? Because, of course, know how to use the mouse and all that kind of things are essential. All right? So, uh, we're going to, we generally use Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Photoshop to draw the technical drawings of the garment. All right? Because nowadays, we are all doing this kind of thing digitally. We are sending information all over the world. So, you don't really, you know, we don't snail mail and all that kind of stuff. But, we will also teach you to do, to draw production sketches by hand as well. All right, because sometimes when you meet a buyer overseas and stuff like that, you want to draw something out fairly quickly. All right, so what is the way to get those kind of construction done and all that kind of things? Create and manage fashion brand. So if you want to set up your own brand, how to go about doing it, how to understand consumer demographics, all right, how to stand out from other brands, what's your unique selling point? All right, how to build personality and positioning. That's why many people buy, open a shop, just open a shop law. Little red rose. Little red rose. What you sell clothes? What kind of clothes? Uh, clothes. Right. And then like, but who are you attracting? Whoever law? Come in, you come in law. <laughs> you know? Like, no idea one law. You know what I mean? Or it's, quite it's quite amazing one. Nah. Like, there's no shame in saying, like, some people say, I want to earn auntie clothes, earn auntie money. So, you know, 45 and above. I want to do flowery, loose silhouette. Da, 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 da. At least that, I, will, I will sell at Tiong Baru, I will sell at Sembawang, one point, you know, those kind of places. Yeah. So, if you want to sell auntie clothes, then you want to open at Ion, nah. you're not going to have a business. You're, you're not, it's going to be viable, right? And then some of the top floor one, nah, you know how Ion is heaven and earth, right? Eh, no, 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 he heaven and hell. Yeah, all right. The first floor flow is heaven, the, what is like, you know, the, the more affordable ones. Not to say that it's hell, hell, ah, but you know, right? So if you put it on the third floor where beside Brooks Brothers or Prada, the kind of thing, no auntie will go in. Not, not, not auntie, auntie, lah, you know? You're not going to get the mess crowd that you're going to get, all right? So these things are important when you think about creating your fashion brand, all right? Uh, fashion retail merchandise buying, all right? How to plan and execute uh, a merchandise plan. What kind of things to buy? Most people, when they become buyer, they just think, buy things I like, law. No, huh? you don't buy things you like. That's called shopping, <laughs> all right? But when you think, when you're buying things for your, for a brand or for, some people may not want to design their own clothes. Huh? For example, like let's say um, Club 21. Club 21 don't produce their own clothes. They buy from Armani, they buy from DKNY, they buy from various places to sell in their store, multi-select stores. All right? So how do you buy things like that? Like for example, um, how much top do you buy? How much bottoms do you buy? Do you have skirts? Do you have dresses? Am I, gonna, am I able to create a complete outfit? Is my customer really interested in dresses? Now, these girls prefer dresses lah, because we can wake up late now. <laughs> Just put on one thing and run out the door, right? If you have two, two pieces, then like, I don't, can I match this or not? Then if you don't match it, uh, then you take the leaf and people like, <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, 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 that kind of thing, right? So you have all these kind of things that come into play, right? So really understand what kind of products to buy and how by buying you can tell a story, all right? You can tell a story. So consumers, when they go in, they understand very clearly what is it that they're going to buy. All right? Do you have matching things or do you have things that are currently working with what they have in their wardrobe, so on and so forth. All right? Of course, best practices in ma managing all this kind of information. All right? Quality assurance. Of course, you want to make sure that you have a certain level of quality. Quality doesn't necessarily mean high quality. Ah. It means quality. That means H&M will have quality. It's just a $9.99 quality, all right? Prada will have a quality. It's just $350 quality, right? So at what level do you, because at certain price point, are you going to have that certain level of quality, okay? 
So how to identify those kind of situations, all the way from fabrics to production to doing testing and all that kind of stuff. Product development, really looking at creating a collection for a brand, all right? Because when you work for a brand, uh, it's not about you anymore. Uh. When you work for Giordano, you have to design with the Giordano customer in mind, with the Giordano brand in mind. Uh. I don't care your wardrobe is full of Dolce and Gabbana's and Chanel, and you, because your father very rich, so you grew up with a diet of like when your baby diaper is Chanel, you know, you grew up there, so you only know that brand. Uh. But when you work for Giordano, you have to be in that mindset, right? When you work for Zara, you must in that be that mindset, regardless whether you are of that taste or not, right? So product development really focuses on that. Are you able to design something that is needed by the brand, that, that shares the same design philosophy of the brand, that the consumer who buy those brands can identify, all right? Because the reality is that there's only one Giorgio Armani, huh? but there are many people who design for Giordano, you know what I mean? So, or many people who buy, who have like those, maybe alien clothes or alien brand, that kind of thing, yeah, I'm not Thai alien, I'm not Thai alien, I cannot design like that. Yes, you can, if you understand the brand, if you understand the customer, if you spend time with Thai alien, if you go on stage, who, 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 drink, 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 then you notice like the way they dress like this, oh, they're like that one, oh, that kind of thing. You're able to design for them, all right? So this module really talks about that. All right, and of course, sew tops, draw do the patterns and sewing tops and bottoms. These are the sewing modules. All right, how to do a basic top and a basic bottom. Of course, you are not going to be sewers. You are not going to be sewers because when you go into the industry, you have people who have ten over years experience in sewing. But when they tell you a problem, you know what they're talking about. All right, so that you are not taken for a ride because you may have sample makers who say, cannot do, cannot do. Then you're like, really, man, why? Then they tell you some things and you're like, oh, okay, Lord. because if you don't know, you don't know. Huh? All right, if I say, take, eat this and you will live five years young, longer or become 10 years younger, huh? you eat this, lah. but you know, you're like, huh, 10 years younger, this, I won't be 10 years younger, you also eat this plastic that doesn't even <laughs> digest and then it poops out like that, the whole thing poops out, lah, right? But if you know that this plastic not digestible, what's the what vitamin, what's the blah, 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 you know that whether a person will be taking you for a ride or not, all right? So that becomes really, really important. And of course, fit evaluation. Really look at, after you sew the garment, how does it fit? What are the fitting problems? How do you solve those problems, all right? Because you, again, Many designers who open the shop or, ha or entrepreneurs who have their own shop, right? they open the shop like, called you know, Lovely Flower. Then you say, who do you design for? Oh, for the young sexy girl. You say, who is this young sexy girl? Oh, she's Jennifer Lawrence. She is, uh, you know, so and so forth. Lah. But who really go into the shop? Ong Lei Huat from Amokyo Avenue 10. <laughs> Right, and she has the Ong Lei Huat Amokyo Avenue 10 body. Or Siti Bin Bismillah, Bin Binti Bismillah will go inside the shop, right? So, do you really understand what these real bodies are? Thinking who, who you're designing for in this fantasy world is very different from who you're designing for for real people. And real people have real problems and, and real uh, issues and want it to be addressed, all right? So, the question is, how do you look at this and see how it fits? Will it work for this body type and all that kind of stuff? Of course, develop design collection. This is our last module for our product development. This, for example, like I said before, the product development is really designing for a brand. Design collection is really focused on you as a designer. What is your aesthetic? If you want to set up your own brand, what is your aesthetic? All right. Am I a very classy, minimalistic designer? Am I a party-going queen loving alien? Are you a menswear tailored in person? What is your aesthetic and how do you do a collection based on what you have in your mind? So you set your creative direction, you set all this decision to make. All right. So it's slightly different from product development in a way where you have less creative control. All right. So that's why we look at runway shows, uh, we look at directional trends, we conceptualize the collection. All right. But we also do technical packages and also uh, you really literally sew up a garment that you wear yourself. We sew up, for the students who do this, you have to sew up a garment and wear the garment for at least two hours. The reason we do that is because when you design, uh, some people design, uh, 
especially guys, or you design for the opposite sex, uh, you have a fantasy of what the person will be. Like, like for another guy who designed for women, uh, they do clothes that are super tight, right? You know, because male designers tend to sexualize women, right? But women designers, when they design for women, it's very different, right? So, like, for example, DKNY, like Stella McCartney, and all these female designers, uh, when they design clothes, uh, it's very livable, it's very comfortable. You live and, you know, the kind of thing. But maybe not as sexy, but when you have men designers who design clothes for women, it's very sexy, but it's so not livable, uh. Right, you wear just super tight, then you like, uh, 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 then you sit down like pregnant woman. I cannot sit down because the, the hip is very tight, you, you know, the kind of thing. But you know, so really have to understand what your customer is going through, right? So because it is your vision, you cannot say like I design what people who like will buy, people who don't like don't buy it, lor. Then be prepared to swap flies, lah. Right, in a way, all right. Uh, do you have designers like that? Of course you have like that, like Valentino, Karl Lagerfeld who passed away already, you know all these big, big, big designs, but people buy not because, not necessarily because of the design, it's because of the brand. They're buying to the brand, not really the design, because people can still buy ugly designs, but because of the Linsiaga, they will still pay money for it or not. Yeah, so different mindset of what the consumer is, right? And of course, virtual fit. So we're also doing virtual fit, meaning that you can actually sew up, virtually sew up your clothes and fit it on an avatar to see how it fits on the garment. Because nowadays everything is digitized now. So that's one of the ways that the newer way of what people are doing right now to actually fit these uh, garments, all right? And you have draping as well. So, uh, sourcing, all right? Where to source, what's the best price to source, how to negotiate, what kind of things to look for and all that kind of stuff. Follow-up order, how from design to production, the time and action calendar, what is it that needs to be uh, done first, what needs to follow up, what's the next step, and all that kind of thing, how to chart the progress of whether things are done properly, all right? Costing, extremely important. Costing, uh, how to calculate a cost, how people who design things, uh, like I spent three days designing this print, so when I price it, uh, I factor in that into my mind uh, that, oh my god, I work so hard, no? I work so hard, like all these colours, I draw all these flowers in individually, one, no? So I sell $500, right? And then people look at $500, yeah, who is this brand? It's similar, eh? Only $500, I can buy this with Zara for 35 you know the kind of thing, right? People tend to price very differently. So how do you accurately price your things that a customer can accept, all right? Of course, sustainable fashion value chain to look at things from a sustainable, ethical, eco uh, environmentally friendly point of view, all right? And e-fashion business, okay? So how to create e-fashion business, do online commerce, social media marketing, extremely important. How to utilize Facebook, TikToks, and all that kind of Google ads, that kind of thing too, kind of bring your brand. Because many, nowadays especially when you do brick and mortar stores, it's expensive. So many people who start their own like to do it online, all right? So, but you need to get your name out there. I always tell people that when students say they want to set up their brand, they say, oh, do it online, law. I said, mm, okay, like why? Oh, because it's free, ma. I said, yeah, true, but I give an example. If you sell your clothes in Paragon, the whole Paragon is your competition. If you sell it on the World Wide Web, the whole world is your competition, right? So how do you bring your name out there? How do you make people pay attention to your things? Because I can shop for anything, huh? How do I key in your name to know this is where I'm looking for? This is what I'm looking for, all right? So that's why you also have inbound marketing, all right? Really understand how to use blogs, video content. Nowadays, people, youngsters don't really like to read things anymore. They like to watch things. They watch on YouTube, they watch on TikTok, they watch on all these kind of platforms and apps and all that kind of stuff, all right? So how do you utilize this? How do you, how to create email marketing? How do you get feedback from customers? How do you get feedback from customers if your customer is in Dubai and you're in Singapore? You can't fly all the way to Dubai to do a survey, la. very expensive, no? So what are the things that you can do to kind of reach out to these people all over the world? Remember, we are doing a worldwide business now, huh? Of course, paid search engine optimization. How to pay to have your name up there when you key in certain words, your first word, the first thing apply. When you key in like, let's say textile, uh, or let's say shoes, right? you key in shoes only, uh, pra, Christian Louboutin, Malono Blanik, 
you, you why they paid for the things to be up there one no it doesn't happen naturally it happened quite unnaturally all right so that there, there is there are ways that, but how do you maximize the use of that what are some of the keywords that you can use how to use ads creatively so on and so forth all right and how to analyze reports to know that these are the people that you're reaching out to Right? Some people say, just use influencer law. My influencer, I got um, 10,000 people on my Instagram. Then you say 10,000, uh, then you look at the Instagram likes 12. <laughs> Only 12 likes, you know, that kind of thing. So you know that that's not working for you. But even if it's working for you, how is it translating it to money? Right? All this must translate to money, yeah? all right? But of course, search engine optimization as well. So if you don't want to pay for it, how can you use it? How do you use your web design? How do you create certain um, campaigns and kind of thing to draw people in, all right? So these are the modules that you'll be going through for both FB and uh, apparel. ADPD apparel in just different kinds of configurations for the modules, all right? So what is life after TFTC? So again, like I said, you can do your degree track by going into all these universities. Many people open their own stores. Pink Sock is a very interesting uh, brand uh, because not only do they do uh, uh, swimwear, resort wear and all that, there are two girls who, who are the founder of Pink Sock and they knew each other in class. They are classmates. One is a very older woman who is very sophisticated and very savvy in marketing. One is this young kid who loves, who's very creative, design a lot. You never think that they'll be together. When, they first, when I first heard that they want to go, go into business together, I'm like, you sure not? Both of you are. You sure not? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I did that. I said, okay. Let's... And they work really well together. All right? So, uh, they, of course, one of them would do the design, other would do the marketing and everything. But they talk, they, they both have a great sense of aesthetic and it binds together. So, the interesting thing about our classes is that these people, the people that you meet in class, are people who are really serious about the industry. So, that's the opportunity for you to kind of network within your class to find potential collaborations and all that. All right? So, Demenaire, again, uh, another menswear designer, all right? He does very sophisticated, uh, very high-end men's uh, suits and stuff like that. The fabrics are imported from Italy, from Europe, and all that kind of stuff, all right? It's often made to measure, all right? Curbside & Co. Curbside & Co. is... Uh, so you can see that you have swimwear, you have suits, and you have casuals like denims, cargo pants, and all that kind of thing. So again, like I said, what is your aesthetic? That's why the design collection helps foster that, that sense, that, that kind of side out, all right? Who are you? What is your taste like? There are people who say, I want to do baju kurung only, all right? I focus on um, modest fashion, all right? So really understanding what your interests are can help you direct the kind of projects, the kind of brands, the kind of uh, communication that you're doing, all right? So our graduates also, for those who don't want to do brands, they've worked in all these brands from H&M, ASOS, Muji, uh, Nike. We've also seen, I've seen students working in MS as buyer, Club 21 as buying uh, uh, as uh, merchandisers as well, so on and so forth. So it doesn't have to be something that you have to sell your own brand. But of course, we always tell people to go out to work for someone to really gain that knowledge first before you want to do your own thing, all right? So these are currently the companies that's looking for uh, gra for our graduates, all right? So Charles and Keith, all right? Style Theory, all right? Lidl, all these are looking for assistant designers, assistant merchandisers, uh, visual merchandisers, so on and so forth, all right? So with that, I'll pass the floor to Matthew, who will talk to you the very important thing. Yeah, so I'm just going to run through the course here. Thank and, uh, you. Last six questions. Uh, Thomas will also be here to address some of the frequently asked questions. If any, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Uh, so for the uh, upcoming intakes, uh, for our apparel design diploma and fashion business diploma, the next part-time diploma intake has already commenced, but you can always hop on to do the second or third module onwards. We only have got one part-time diploma intake in a year, so that's the, the diploma that I would I, I would like to highlight to y'all. 
Uh, second is our full-time diploma intakes, right? The next one will start the end of this month on the 31st of March. So we have a full-time intake every quarter. So the, the next one is the end of this month. The following one will be three months from now, which would be July. And then the last one that I want to stress is the advanced certificate. We do have this advanced certificate course, which is a lower tier uh, course than the diploma course. Uh, right. Okay, so advanced is a weekend intake that we are going to run uh, for the first time. So we will commence on the 25th of July. So I will run you through the advanced later. So for the diploma in apparel design, uh, Singaporeans uh, 40 and below or PR, uh, it will, the net fees will be 6.9K, right? So this is the fees after subsidy. Then for those Singaporeans age 40 and above, the fees will be 2.6K. So that's after 90% subsidy. And the last year would be any Singaporeans holding a uh, workfare training support letter, the uh, subsidy is 95%, so it'll be 1.5K. So this is the diploma in apparel design, right? Uh, so I'll move on to fashion business. Diploma in fashion business, the fees are as such, net fees 5.1K. Uh, the 90% subsidy is 2.2k and then uh, WTS is at 1.3k. Okay, the next is advanced in apparel design. Uh, this, this course is one third of the entire diploma, but it gives you the essence of like uh, all the essential disciplines in fashion that you need to know. So in advanced in apparel design, you will learn how to make your own blouse, skirt, shirt, pants. Uh, you also learn how to make uh, do textiles and a uh, couple of the other modules that will help you to understand the apparel making uh, process. So for those who are working and uh, they don't want to take the plunge, they can always consider doing the advanced certificate compared to the diploma. So the diploma is a bigger commitment. Uh, so the idea is that if you are still unsure, you can always speak to one of us so that we can at least understand at which stage you are at and then advise you which uh, uh, qualification will make sense for you, whether it's a diploma or the advanced certificate course. The next is uh, advanced certificate in fashion business. Uh, this one, the fees are also about the same. Both the apparel design and fashion business, the fees are on 90% uh, subsidized. So even if you're below 40, you're still getting 90% subsidy. Excuse me. Both yeah. The 70% and the 90% is the same fee. Yeah. So actually, in fact, uh, just don't, uh, it's actually 90% flat. So uh, just ignore the 70%, it's actually 90%. For advanced certificate, it's 90%. Uh, good, uh, good that you raised that point. So advanced certificate, like as long as you're a Singaporean on PR, by default, you get 90% subsidy. Whereas the diploma is, if you're below 40 years old, then it's only a 70% subsidy. And if you're above 40, then it's a 90% subsidy. Yeah. Okay, so these are the further subsidies. If you have got your skills future credits, you can uh, use $500 to offset your current net fees. Uh, if you're Singaporean age 30 and below, you can use your PSEA funds uh, to offset the net fees as well. And the last one will be an uh, installment scheme for those paying a net fee of above $6,000. So we have an installment scheme available, so just ask us and we'll let you know more about the installment scheme. Uh, the next one would be uh, if you're interested in a hybrid of like uh, work, uh, doing an internship program and also like a diplo uh, dip uh, diploma course with us, we do have this train and place program. So how the train and place program actually works is you will be doing your four months of diploma in apparel design or fashion business will be three months and like you'll be paid a training allowance of $1,000 for five cycle, right? So during your training phase of that four months, you get a training allowance of $1,000 each and then subsequently we'll find you an internship company to work there for two months. So uh, we need your resume so that we can start to apply for our partners and then our partners will then link uh, you guys <laughs> after your studies to work uh, in the internship company for two months. And then subsequently, the catch of this program uh, is you are required to work in the fashion industry for at least five months. So whatever job that was flashed earlier by Thomas, uh, those jobs can be found on our website also. So we have a, a full-time staff that is maintaining uh, the accounts of our stu uh, the life after TAF DC. That means like if you want to get jobs after this or you want to be an entrepreneur, uh, we can link you to a, a community of... Uh, of our existing students and our partners also. We are actually from the industry, so whatever context you need, like large-scale manufacturers or uh, designers, we will do our best to, to create success in you guys too. Okay? So that's the train and place program. You guys can inquire more if you all like to be part of this program. Uh, the next is place and train program, but I will cover that if you're interested because we are uh, lack of time. Uh, so every time you complete a diploma course, right, whether it's a apparel design or fashion business, the government gives you a training, 
a SkillsFuture qualification award of $1,000. So that can uh, be an incentive for you to sign up to. Um, so just going on to today, if you were to enroll for any course today, you only uh, be paying the application fee for the any of the qualification costs. So if you are going to sign up for a diploma or advanced certificate, uh, you only pay the application fee. And like we reimburse the application fee uh, once you complete the first module of the course that you're doing, right? And then uh, only for today, like we will also be giving a sewing toolkit if you enroll for a diploma advanced, or and also a fully sponsored uh, one day fabric care workshop uh, by our partner Bansun. So it's a one day workshop in a hotel. Yeah. So now I will take questions. If you're like from the talk from Thomas and and about the diploma in apparel advanced, you all can ask us questions. Yeah. We have about ten minutes to think about ten minutes to, to take questions. For well, some of you who may want to see the slides again and all that kind of thing to think about what you just saw and because sometimes when we run too fast, you yeah. can actually go to this QR code and you scan it and you get the slides there. Alright, so uh, so that you can kind of review them and stuff like that. Alright. So for people who want to really seriously go into uh, diploma, um, do know that like I said it's intensive, but you get uh, a lot uh, of information out of it. Alright, so the commitment needs to be there. Alright, but obviously if you feel like you just want to touch, if you just want to put your toes into the water to see hot or not, will I die, you know, those kind of things, huh? then the advanced certificate is more for you. Of course, different people would have different needs and all that kind of stuff. So we do have a group of uh, people that you can talk to to kind of identify, just tell them your needs and what, your, what are your limitations or what are you looking for and they will uh, guide you to the right direction in the things that you need to do. Yeah, I think just adding on to what he said, like the idea is not to just quickly plunge yourself and enroll into a course. I think it's important for you to work with us just to identify whether is this course a good fit for you and then subsequently you decide uh, which path will be a better f uh, path for you, whether is it the advanced or the diploma course. Um, so do work with uh, the consultants. I'm, I'm also one of the consultants here too, so you can always approach me uh, for those who seriously want to learn more about this and then we can draw a possible timeline for you guys. Uh, what's even better is that after this, at the, I think end of the day, we do yes. have a panel session with our ex-students like Debonair and some of the brands, ex-students who actually created their own brands, they will come in for a talk as well. So if you want to see that, because you know when trainer talk or full-time staff talk, uh, you do not know like that, <laughs> no, really, no, when you say this, say that, you sell, 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 that kind of thing, right? But the idea is that you can actually ask the student what they went through, how tough is it, yeah, it is. what did they get out of it, what is their journey from taking the diploma all the way to setting up their brands and all that kind of stuff. So um, after this talk, we actually have a footwear talk. After yes, the diploma, I'm back. we will have the panel uh, discussion. So if you want to stay a little bit longer, you can actually listen to that. I think that's very helpful, especially when you talk about for people who want to set up their own brand, who have, and if you have a student uh, who say like, I will set up my own brand, I say, you, you, you know a lot of work one, right? They say, yeah, yeah. I say, you know won't sleep one, right? And they're like, no, I will sleep. The student said, I will sleep. I said, no, you won't sleep. He said, no, I must have eight hours sleep. Man. I said, no, that's not going to happen. He said, no, no, no. I will plan in a way that I will have eight hours sleep. So he graduated. He did his thing like maybe four or five months later. He called me up like, hey, Thomas, can I see you again to review some of the work? Like? No, because that's the connection we have with our past students and all. So students normally call me up and go through their uh, portfolio and stuff like that. He came in, the first question that I asked, do you sleep? <laughs> and then, no, then showed his work and stuff like that. So the thing that when we talk about, uh, that students will have this idea that, no la, I will be da 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 kind of So having the opportunity for you to talk to the students who've gone through this diploma, or talk, uh, to listen to what they have to say, I think that's extremely important. So if you want to, please stay so that you can actually listen and pick their minds on what they, uh, what they went through. All right, if you don't have any questions. Okay, what time? Um, I, the talk should be at uh, two o'clock. Two o'clock, I think. Yeah. Two o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Be in this yes, it will be this uh, room. Yeah. So you can go walk around, go to Brown Plaza, go walk CC. Yeah, and then come back huh, for that. Oh, you want to stay for the to listen to the footwear diploma? You can yes. do so as well. Yeah. All right. Any last questions? Uh, please ask. Oh, yes. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Okay.
take it inside a watered down version of it. Yes. So what if we decide to take you know, the advanced debate first mm -hmm. and then we decide to lower the diploma? Is there like any exemptions? Yes, it is. There is, yeah. Um. Not really. The only reason is because, well, like for example, advanced you have textiles, diploma you have textiles, right? But the advanced textiles is really touching on a very surface area to let you know what generally is about. For example, like you only be taught maybe 30 different types of fabric because of time constraint. Mm. If you take diploma, we will teach you up to 60 different types of fabrics. So we will talk about machineries, we will da da da, all these very in depth things. So for mm. diploma, it's really about depth. You know, you may look at, oh, this, the same is this, the same title mark or the same kind of category, right? But it's a whole different animal altogether. It's talking about a cat and a tiger, lah. Yeah, yeah. So that's the biggest difference. So if you go for the net class, then we decide to train the diploma. So we have to, like, you only pay for this, uh, mm. then we will have to Pay again for the diploma. Yes, it is. So the, the thing is, back to your question, right? So advanced certificate to diploma course, right? You get like one or two modules exemption. So like advanced in apparel design, uh, you get a like one module, like draw digital image is one of the modules that you get exempted from the next, from the diploma if you intend to do the next one. So, uh, yeah. Yes, it yeah. is. But the yeah. reality, like I told you before, is that many students who take uh, the advanced to see whether it's for me or not, after they take the whole thing, then they find that I really want to go into this, but I need deeper knowledge now. Then they take the diploma. So when they find that they need a diploma, they find that it's easier for them because they've kind of have some foundation. Yes, already. it is. Some people, yeah. when they jump into the diploma, they'll be like, they will take a harder time to catch up. Lah. So it all depends on what your learning speed is. And yeah, what it is. Your, but also nobody take three months and say, I want to convert to diploma because you don't just tender your work and then yeah, it is, it is. Time, you yeah. know that kind of thing. Very, we've not really seen that kind of Yeah, thing. so the full-time diploma I think is really intensive because it's yeah. like almost every single day, like except weekends, but sometimes you have Saturday yeah. classes and when or so. We say intensive, we it's really intensive, intensive because yeah. When we when we train you, we don't just train you knowledge, but we also train you not to sleep. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> no, especially yeah, Thomas's class. The, yeah, Thomas's class. Especially the last one. Yeah it is. Class, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he teaches the last one. <laughs> Yeah, so actually, in fact, if you look at the diploma, it's actually made out of the professional certificate courses. So like, if you look at the diploma in apparel design, it's made out of 15 modules and like fashion business, 18 modules. So it's a curated uh, batch of like WSQ modules that we put so them all inside. Yeah, you can take them individually, but of course there's, we have other modules that don't fall into the, we don't package into the diploma program yes. that you, you can still take on its own. Yes. So we actually have a wide, we have almost like 300 odd more classes. The professional take. certificate is available online there. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, yes. So is the master class as well. Master class, yes. Master class, we generally, because we run maybe one or two times a year, each different times, so we would put banners out there. When you go to our website, if there's a one coming up, uh, yeah, Trust it is. I believe it will be the first thing you see when you go to our website. So those are like the celebrity trainers that come over to teach with yeah. us. Like Juliet Roberts teaching intermediate draping uh, is coming down next week too. Yeah. So like those are really like the master classes that we, we throw in just yeah. to further deepen your understanding in certain uh, skills and disciplines. Juliet Roberts, like most of you who are not in the industry wouldn't know, uh, but I have friends who are like fashion people, uh, they would be like, Juliet Roberts is coming? Yeah. Oh my god, think of the cost as a book, I want him to sign that kind of yeah, famous. Yeah, yeah. Type one nah. So I mean of course it's for people within the um, yeah. industry who knows la. So when we say that it's celebrity trainer, yeah, it's celebrity it's YouTube. like Wolfgang Park coming to teach how to cook la. Because if you oh I got cookbook for him to sign, you know that kind of thing. Yeah. So for the uh, professional set and master class are they skill futures and neighbor as well? Yes, uh, skills which do you mean the subsidies or yes it is. So on one hand you get sub, uh, 70 to 90% or 95% subsidies for Singaporeans or PR uh, and you also can use your skills future credits to offset the net fees too. So those are the available fundings. Yeah. Uh, if you feel like it's a huge plunge, you can also work with us because if, if we deem that you 
are not really, like if you don't see yourself fully committing to the entire diploma course, for example, you can always go on the modular approach. So like do two or three modules within a diploma first and then see whether is this something that you would like to carry on and then move uh, forward. So our part-time diploma is usually scheduled like Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Uh, Tuesday, Thursday from 7 to 10 p.m., Saturday from 8.30 to 5.30 p.m. Uh, if you want to plunge yourself into a full-time uh, diploma, it will be like from 8.30 to 5.30, from Monday to Friday, sometimes there's Saturday classes. So the intensities really vary, you see. Yeah. Depending on your... Uh, your, your, your commitment, yes, your current commitments. Okay. All right. If there are no questions... Thank you for joining us. Thank you very yes. much. So if you have any questions, you can ask our uh, consultants and all that kind of thing. If not, yes. you can talk to us. Yeah. Or better yet, come in, come back later to listen to what our students have anything yeah. to say. Right? We will be in the consultant consul consultation room. Like the, the side, right? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.